The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to this morning's webinar. I'll be your host this morning. Uh, today we have with us Jean Chawapiwa, uh, who will be talking to us about facilitating business in Nigeria. Uh, she is at our offices at the moment and just busy getting set up there. Um, so in the meantime, if you could just check to the chat box to your right of your screen, if you could just type in there, if you could hear me, just type in the word audio and if you can see the screen, just type in screen into the question box on the side. Um, so while we wait for Jean to come into the room, we can make sure that everything is, is working. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Right. Let's see if Jean is in the room. Thank you, Patrick. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It seems to be working perfectly. Right. So, Jean is, for those of you who don't know Jean, um, is a communication expert with over 25 years of corporate communications experience. Um, and her portfolio includes supporting businesses in South Africa, Namibia, Guinea, uh, Madagascar, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Cameroon, DRC, Tanzania. Um, she was born in Zimbabwe and raised in the UK. And Jean has lived an amazing life and worked all over Africa for the last 19 years. She has evolved from a corporate giant and into an entrepreneur, motivational speaker, and coach, mentor, and soon-to-be author. So you're in for a treat this morning. And this morning, as I said, she'll be talking about facilitating business in Nigeria. Um, if you could just give us a few seconds. I just want to see that Jean comes into the room. Unfortunately, she does seem to be having a little bit of technical issues on her laptop. Um, if you could just give us one or two minutes and then we will start the webinar. Thank you very much. We uh, wait for Jean to come in the room. Um, I'm just waiting for an update from the team on that side. Uh, let's find out from the people that are already in the room, and there's quite a few people already still coming in, so this at least gives them an opportunity to not miss out on the webinar. Um, if we could find out where are where is everybody from, um, and also what do you hope to take from this webinar when it comes to doing business in Africa? Are you currently doing business in Africa? Are you looking at expanding? your business into Africa. Um, let's get a bit of background so that when Jean joins us, she can maybe touch on, on some of those points. So just in the question box to the right, um, where you typed in audio and screen earlier, if you could just let me know where are you from um, and what is your plans for, for doing business in Africa or are you currently doing business in Africa? Let's try and get a feel for, for everybody in the room. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Patrick's from 
Durban, looking to do business in Africa, financial planning industry, excellent. Thank you, I see uh, uh, Richard. Richard, also looking at expanding into Mozambique. Nice to have you with us, Richard. Nana is originally from Nigeria, so this should be an interesting webinar for her, um, and has a London tech-based company looking at a focus on Africa. Well, welcome Nana. I hope uh, we'll be of service to you this morning. And Ricardo is a, we already has a little business in Nigeria, so that's quite a few people already doing business or in business in Nigeria and looking to expand in that region. Um, and he's in the distributing of security products. So. Thank you, Ricardo, for joining us. Let's see where Jean is and if we can get her started on this webinar. Thank you, everybody. I think uh, Jean may be in the room. Um, I'll double check with the team now. Anissa, thank you for joining us. Uh, also looking, also in the financial industry, um, and does due diligence services in Nigeria, and looking to invest in different opportunities there between the UK and Nigeria. Thank you, Anissa, for for joining us, um, and thank you for the information, everybody. I'm sure Jean will find this very useful when connecting with you down the line and giving her an opportunity to sort out what she needed to sort out on her PC. Um, yeah, she said she's with us in the room. Uh, let me just get her on as a presenter, and then we can be begin. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. Right, um, let's just double check. Um, Jean, if, are you with us? Can you hear me? Hear my screen? Yeah, if you could just share your screen with us. You are live. Can Thanks. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Good morning. How are you, Jean? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm very stressed now. Very stressed. Uh, don't, don't Technology. Be, oh my God. Don't don't be stressed. Uh, oh you, my God. I'm. I apologize to those online. I'm really really sorry. Well, um, you, you've the got technology kind of takes it out of you sometimes. You've got a very engaged audience and a lot of people doing business in Africa and in Nigeria already. So. Um, Something good comes from everything, so here we go. Over to you, yeah. Jean. I've already done your introduction, so without any further ado, enjoy, and thank you for everybody's patience. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Um, as he said, we've run out, we're kind of um, cutting some of our time. You've heard my introduction, so I'm not going to go through that. Uh, my business is Win-Win Solutions for Africa. We focus on facilitating doing business in Africa, so Africa is our business. Um, I work with an amazing team based here in Johannesburg as well as in other parts of the continent and these countries are basically our focus areas. Um, these are the areas where our team has experience on the continent but our network obviously goes much wider and I'm not going to go through each of the countries but obviously one of those countries is Nigeria which is our focus for today is Nigeria. So this morning we're going to go through 
the investment potential, the economics, the country facts, the business opportunities, um, and what shapes that amazing country called Nigeria. I've had the pleasure of visiting Nigeria, although I haven't been there for a number of years now. I have a guest with me who is an expert on the country. So I'm really delighted to introduce you and welcome this morning um, Adetunji Omotola, um, who is a friend and a real expert on the country. Um, he, is a multi, he has a multidisciplinary background, which includes a BSc Sociology from the University of Lagos, Lagos and an LLB from South Bank University in London and a Master's in Communications Research from the University in Leicester in the UK. He's a founder of the Guild of Nigerian Professionals, um, so a real expert and net networks with a lot of the experts from that country. He's also a solicitor and advocate of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, having called to the Nigerian Bar in 2001. He's worked as a financial planner for old mutual private wealth management from 2004 to 2006. And he's a wine consultant. Um, amazing, he really knows his wine and, and does a great job of selling it. And he's a well-known voice in South Africa and on, on the continent, um, on Nigeria and other African countries. He's been heard on 702 and many, many other uh, radio stations, TV, etc. So I'm sure once he starts talking, you'll all recognize his voice. So welcome and good morning. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, I always start with the fact that, you know, Afri people talk about Africa, Africa as if it's a country, but Africa is actually a huge continent. Obviously, 54 diverse countries, um, almost a billion people, and, and it's very large. And today we want to focus on Nigeria, but obviously the rest of the continent has an impact on, um, on Nigeria. And I love this um, slide that shows the true slide of size of Africa. You know, we can fit China, India, the United States, Spain, France, Germany, and a few others onto the continent and the size of it. So it's, it's really amazing that we, we've got that, the, the size and the people so how do we make sure that we tap into that um, great benefit that we've actually been given and turn those into economic wealth for our people? So that's something we need to look at with Nigeria. Just stepping back a little bit, for us as Win-Win Solutions, uh, we run a scenario planning workshop. Our next one is 25th September, and there's another date of the 9th of October, and Nigeria and West Africa is part of our focus for that program and we'll come back to that. Um, so it's one of our expertise. So let's go straight in. Why Nigeria? Let's just go straight into your introduction on what is it that makes this country so amazing? Well, um, look, I've always said that, uh, in fact, I'll quote the immediate past foreign minister of Nigeria, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Wiala, the famous lady, who says that if you're not in Nigeria, when you're doing business, then you're not in Africa. Now, Nigeria, as we all know, is a country that is fascinating, diversity. You have about 350 ethnic groups, a very rich history. Um, we have lakes, rivers, mountains, oceans. You have a great uh, people, dynamic, boisterous. Of course, sometimes there's a lot of tension because you've got this ethnic uh, diversity of people always contesting for the natural resource which ironically is in a part of the country that is uh, minority-based. So the country is very fascinating. Amazing. So um, I'm always wondering, capital Abuja, we always think of the capital as being Lagos. Why is the capital Abuja? Yes, interestingly, uh, the capital Abuja is a new thing. Mm -hmm. I think it was moved there in about the late 19, early 1990s. The capital originally was in Lagos. Abuja, if you look at the, the uh, topography of Nigeria, it's right bang in the middle. And so they felt that they needed to move the capital into a place that was equidistant to some of the other regions. So that's how you have uh, Abuja as the capital. The population is much smaller than Lagos. Lagos is about 20 million people. Abuja is growing everything. We're looking at about four or five million people in Abuja. Mm. So population is obviously one of the great assets that Nigeria has. 
Um, and people often speak about the languages as a barrier. So tell us about the language. Obviously, English is widely spoken. Nigerians are extremely highly educated as we experience them across the world. But um, tell us a little bit more about the people. Yeah, basically, the, the critical component of Nigeria um, is that now we have six geopolitical zones. So the country has been divided up into six for political convenience. So you have the north, which is three regions, and the south, which is three regions. So the south is the south-south and the southwest. The president is from the north. The vice president is from the southwest. So there's a balancing act. In the previous administration, you have the president from the south-south, and mm -hmm. you have the vice president from the north. Um, you have Muslim about 50%, Christians about 40%. But it's not that easy. Some people think the north is entirely Muslim and the south is entirely Christian. That is not the case. So you've got um, Christians in the north and you've also got Muslims in the south, particularly in the southwest. But the critical thing is that English is widely spoken. Uh, the country was colonized by the UK. Yes. So English course. is widely spoken. Once you've gotten some basic education, you'll be able to speak the language. So people generally can speak English, and that's the official language, although we have about 12 other languages that are dominant. Yeah, and this slide also talks to entry visas, so let's go right there. Uh, easy country to get into, visas, can you get the visas as you enter the country, or you must go through the... Um, um, immigration. immigration. Yeah, yeah. basically, if, if you're a member of ECOWAS, I think there's about 16 countries from Ghana, to Mali, to Liberia, Sierra Leone, and uh, right. Ivory Coast. It's easy, it's like SADC, mm -hmm. so you don't need a visa. But once you're outside the ECOWAS region, so if it's East Africa, like Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and then in SADC, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Mozambique, then you need to apply for a visa. It's pretty straightforward. It takes about a week or so. Mm -hmm. You do an online application, uh, nigeria.gov.za, and pretty much I think it's about $100 or so. By 1,500. So it's pretty easy. Of course, you have to have a reason for going yeah. into the country. Absolutely. So that that's really good to know that it's easy. So let's go into the politics. So everybody expected a great elections, and there was easy transition with the with the elections. So tell us about the new president, who um, seems to have no tolerance for corruption. Absolutely. Uh, president Muhammad Buhari. He ruled Nigeria from 19, uh, December 31st, 1983 to um, August 27, 1985, before he was toppled in a military coup. Mm -hmm. And basically, during this, that short period, he was on record for brooking no-nonsense. He put a lot of the corrupt politicians in jail, and uh, he, was a, he was able to do some very decisive things. And this, the elections this year brought about a merger between the opposition parties because it's the first time in Nigeria's history that an incumbent has lost an election. So President Jonathan, after five years in office, was defeated by a margin of about 10%. And of course, President Buhari, the reason why people are excited about his leadership is that they know that he has a record of being strict, very frugal, very modest. And what he's been able to do since he's come to office is to be able to shun any grandiose uh, things that have to do with the presidential office. He's also been shy of appointing ministers, because ministers have been generally corrupt. Yeah. And so he said he will wait. I think he's going to appoint those ministers this month. So he's definitely a different type of leader. He's just declared his assets in total. He's got a net value of about $150,000, which is significant in a country where people have billions of dollars stashed away. So I, I think he's going to make a lot of impression on the country, particularly in security and anti-corruption. I think those are strong areas. Excellent. Um, and you talked about the ministers still to be appointed. Has there been a lot of tran transition from previous ministers, or has he kind of started afresh? Um, yeah, the way politics works is that when an, another party takes power, I don't think you're going to be generous to your uh, opposition, as it were. So we were not likely to see um, for, uh, a carryover. Although having said that, um, the, the new government lobbied extensively for the new president of the African Development Bank, who was the immediate past Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Adeshina, who now has the Africa Bank. Yes. But uh, what we are likely to see, he's already said 
that he does not want a single person in his cabinet who has been tainted by corruption. Now, that's very difficult in Nigeria because how do you become a minister or a governor and you don't, you know, get a little bit of money on the side? But people are looking forward to his cabinet, which he says he will appoint before the end of uh, this month. Excellent. So we'll look out for that. That's really, that's really good to hear. Um, and a president well, really well needed. So the economics. The economics in Nigeria have been doing very well. We know that they've now taken over South Africa. Uh, there was big news around that. Um, and I'm not sure if South Africans celebrated or commiserated, but <laughs> I, I think competition is good for all of the African countries. So, so tell us about the economics. What's really driving this growth in Nigeria? Okay. First of all, you've got to understand the structure of the Nigerian economy. Um, 2.2 million barrels of oil crude oil per day, what they call the bonny light crude, sweet crude oil. That's really where the government revenues come from. And it's about 80% of government revenue stems from oil. Well, having said that, with the decline in the price of oil, that has affected the government's revenue. Now, what, what happens is you've got a diversified approach in the last few years. The government has tried to reform, for example, the banking consolidation in 2005 has created 25 banks out of the previous 94 banks that were not very strong. So we have 25 banks trading in Nigeria, although you still have only about 22 million bank accounts. Um, agriculture is a very key industry. Yes. Um, we, we, we've seen reduced importation of rice. So agriculture is producing, I think, contributing about 22% to the GDP, oil is only about 14%, mm. even though it's about 95% of, ex, uh, of foreign exchange earnings and about 80% of government revenue. We've also seen growth in the ICT telecom sector. You have about 130 yes. million lines in, in Nigeria, MTN having about 61 million of those lines with about 55% market share. We've also seen uh, the rise of music, the culture industries, music mm. in Nollywood. Absolutely. Nollywood country is yes. about a billion dollars. Second biggest uh, me, uh, film industry in the world, actually. So Nollywood is significant, although not as sizable. And of course, the wholesale and retail trade. We've seen the growth of retail businesses, particularly the South African businesses like your ShopRite, your Massmats, your um, Game, and so many other uh, uh, industries have come in. The aviation sector is also great in Nigeria. There's a lot of internal flights because the roads are not so good. So that's also carrying millions of people. And also the tourism industry is also growing. A lot of people who are going into a place called Calabar. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's a program on television uh, called Ebony Life that broadcasts from Calabar. Calabar is the capital of Cross River State. Mm -hmm. That's so where you have the Ogunjura. provinces Ogunjura. up, the 36 provinces. Yeah, we have 36 provinces. Uh, the key ones are Lagos, Kano, uh, of course, Abuja, River State, mm -hmm. and then some parts of the east where you have a lot of uh, activity. But Benue Estate is actually the food basket of Nigeria. That's where most of the food comes from. And then the oil producing areas, which is called the South South Rivers, Bayelsa, Akwaibam. Those are the oil rich areas. And then you've got the Southwest, where there's a lot of agriculture, or Shun, or Yo, and so on. And the North is really where you have the pyramids, the cotton, the textiles, the north of the country, although the challenge is there with the insecurity situation. But the government is really robust in pulling that back. There's a lot of changes in the hierarchy of the military to combat Boko Haram, and that has been gaining some ground lately. Yeah. So the growth you talk about across the different sectors, is that happening across the, the provinces, or is it still isolated in Abuja, Lagos, um, and a few other places? If people are looking for opportunities, which states should they focus on? So let's say top five states you should look for opportunities. I think I think Nigeria, um, the, the key compelling opportunity in Nigeria will be states that are not necessarily like already developed. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the, the, the axis of the Niger Delta, your Bayelsa, your Cross River, your um, rivers, your Akwaibam, and then the east where most of the, the traders come from. If I, what people are saying is that if they can build, um, if they can build the ports, if they can strengthen the ports in the eastern part, yes. the people would then, then not need to bring containers and drive them all the way. So you're looking at states like Imo, Anambra, Ebonyi, Enugu, and so on, where you have 
a significant amount of density, and you also have a lot of uh, big markets like Abba Market and Onisha. So the southeast of the country, very compelling, and parts of the north. That will cre create a lot of opportunity, although the infrastructure there may not be as solid as what you will have in Lagos and Abuja and Portakot. That's excellent. That's good to hear. Um, so we've been to, through some of the country facts already. We've talked about the diverse opportunities with the land, uh, the population. We know multilingual we've covered. Um, so let's talk about one of my exciting topics for Nigeria. Some of the richest people are coming out of Nigeria. The Nigerian billionaires, the industrialists, we hear a lot about their expansion into the rest of Africa, and they're certainly investing heavily. So tell us about, so how come Nigeria is the place that's creating the largest number of African billionaires? It's, What's yeah. special about it, and where are they also investing? It's very simple logic, Jane. If you sell uh, a product, let's say you buy a product for $1, I sell it for $2 in Nigeria, that's $1 a profit, times 170 million, that's already $170 million, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were to make, let's say, 30% profit on a yearly basis for five years, you're already a billionaire in, in Nigeria. That's why a lot of people say in Nigeria that they're not interested in going outside Nigeria because the market in Nigeria is about 50% so of, of yes. West Africa. Yes. So I think also what it is is that then I, I just come back from Nigeria, and if you look at the entrepreneurial spirit, people simply do not sleep. People mm -hmm. work very long hours, they sleep like in their that. cars, they sleep on the floor, almost like China. Mm -hmm. People refuse to sleep, they don't take breaks, they eat on the move, they're working very hard, everybody wants to build a house, everybody wants to buy a car, everybody wants to travel. Yeah. So, And also, when you look at people like Dangote, mm -hmm. he's been lucky in the sense that he's, he's into... Um, the things that people need on a daily basis, cement, yes. vegetable oil, rice, yes. um, you know, um, spaghetti, indomie they call it, you know, yeah. noodles. These are things that people must consume every day. So in Nigeria, some of the guys who are the richest, they're into things like banking, things that people need, because banks are the pillar of business, right? So Elumelu is in the banks. Yes. Um, uh, Kim Belo Sage is in telecoms. Jim Obie is in a bank. Uh, Mike Adenuga is the owner of Glow. And women. Telecom. So tell me about the women billionaires. So the women billionaires are, uh, are rarer than the men. Yes. But there are there are a few. There's a Bola Shagaya. Nice. There's Mrs. Alakija. They're in the oil sector. Yes. And uh, you know, once you're in the oil sector in Nigeria, it's a given. If you if you're oil block, you become a billionaire because those oil blocks are very uh, lucrative in there. They're like mining in in South Africa. So some of the ladies you find they've, they've gotten an oil block and they've been able to make a lot of money from that but they're rarer than the men they're only about three or four of them but the men they're quite a few dozen of those yeah but it's a good it's a good opening to have Absolutely. three or four hopefully that will go into 30 or 40 and of course that leads us straight into fashion uh, Nigeria has been for a long time kind of the, the fashion capital of Africa I'm sure other people will dispute that but I've seen it from with my own eyes there's a lot of exciting ideas coming out of Nigeria around fashion, and now we have a Rise magazine show, which is now being showcased to the New York Fashion Show, which is amazing. Absolutely. Look, the Nigerian culture simply says that you must dress up. Yes. People dress up even when they're hungry, right? So people polish their shoes all the time, five times a day. People carry handkerchiefs in their pocket. They always want to look that way. This competition, who looks best, who dresses better. So it's a cultural thing, and they sew their own clothes, so they, they don't rely on you know, established brands only. They want to make made to measure yeah. what they call in Nigeria cut and sew. You cut it and you sew it. So the fashion industry has always been there. We have a huge textile background. People are very dynamic. They're creative people. And um, it's cheaper to make your own clothes, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they, and, they've and done very great, well. It's really a great lesson to the rest of Africa, you know, when we have a lot of Chinese imports flooding the continent. Absolutely. You know, that we actually have the skill ourselves to do a lot of these things. Absolutely. So moving on, so we talked about a little bit about the music. We know Nigerian music is very exciting. A lot of us have been to parties uh, where the music is amazing. Also making a lot of money on the continent. Absolutely. Music is the, this is the food of love. Or music yes. is life. I think also Nigerian music has come from a long way back. We've had people in the 50s and 40s, blind musicians like Kokoro. Mm -hmm. who play the drum. We have people like King Sonia, Fela Nikula Kukutsi. We have so many musicians 
we've really cut their feet on the international stage. But what the new guys are doing is that they've been able to add choreography, they've been able to yes. do a lot of video, An exciting choreography, exciting choreography. Too, yes. and also there's they they're benchmarking against the Americans. Yes. So that's another advantage. Nigerians want to benchmark with the best. Yeah. So as a result, you see that the music has almost become household names like Two Face, The Band, yeah. Whiskey, and all those guys. But they're doing very well for themselves. Some of them are driving Bentleys and I moving around in private jets. That's great. So we've touched on Bollywood. Obviously, it's a major phenomenon that's going on, and it's well known across the continent. So social media was something that interested me. That a lot of Nigerians, uh, over 3 million Facebook users, and I also read there's a lot of bloggers in Nigeria. Is, is that because people, the fashion thing is then translating into pictures and they love Facebook? You know, how's that coming Nigerians up? want to stay connected. Yes. And so anything, whether it's a phone or a laptop or an iPad or internet, they want to know what's going on in uh, London, in yes. New York. And so, so the, the internet for them has become a huge resource. Also, the, the level of social activities, um, they're not as diverse as you have in South Africa. So we don't have a lot of parks and libraries and so on. So people also use that as a knowledge tool. So they do a lot of research, they do a lot of studies, they do correspondence courses, uh -huh. communicate with their families, stay in touch with their friends, and also you keep out of mischief. Yes. So I think a lot of the youngsters are spending more time on their apps on their phone, but it's significant. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. And, and then I love this one. Um, a survey of 65 countries show that the happiest people in the world live in Nigeria. And I think that comes true when you meet the people, they're very buoyant, they're happy to see people, they're very welcoming of foreigners when you're in the country, which is fantastic. And of course, we've talked, they've talked through some of the best parties ever. Absolutely. Uh, real wardrobe pressure Absolutely. when you're in the, invited to Nigeria. So, happiest people in the world? Absolutely. Look, it's it's very interesting. I mean, people. Uh, they, they, there was a there was a guy that I just gave fifty rand to last week, a security guard at the hotel, and he's the happiest guy. And you expect him to be the most miserable because he's opening the gate every five minutes. I think what it is is I think the weather plays a part. I think the 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 people is also their the the natural ability to 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 be to to triumph. In any adverse situation, a Nigerian will always come out of it. They look at life as a contest, yes. and they also enjoy competition. They love drama. They love to take risks and so on. And also, the people are generally given. Yes. So you don't find people who, are, even if they're down on their luck, somebody next door can help them out. help out. They have a hope that they can also become president one day. So I think that keeps them, and they're very spiritual as well. Of course, so yes, the Christianity helps. Absolutely. All of them. Yeah. So let's go to the serious stuff, investment. Um, there's obviously a lot of potential in the country. You talked about banking. Now when you talk about, there's a lot, now 25 banks. Are, are some of our major banks, the brands we recognize here in South Africa, represented there? Um, yeah, there are a couple. Uh, there's a pact, um, there's a merger between Standard and IBTC, which is now called Stampic. In fact, that's the same bank in Lagos. They call it Stampic. Yes. So if you see Stampic Standard, is a there's, so there's there, FMB, I believe, FMB. Is interested in going in there. RMB is there. Rand Merchant Bank is there. Although they do more uh, infrastructure deals, so the South African banks going there. Although the banks uh, that are available, that there's only about one or two licenses left, because they want to keep them to 25. But I think the critical thing for investment in Nigeria is the return on that investment. Yes. So when you look at the likes of MTN, I mean, they, the business plan in the first one year, they had already exceeded business plan. I mean, when they got into Nigeria, there was only 400,000 lines. So then we have about 130 cell phone lines. Also, the ease of doing business in Nigeria. I mean, Nigerians are generally available at any time of the day to do business. Also, the GDP growth uh, last year to $510 billion has helped to improve the, the credit rating of Nigeria. Mm. Nigeria is very well linked into the bond markets. The stock market is very vibrant. Uh, Dangote represents about 25% of that stock market. Dangote himself has expanded into the rest of the continent. I think also if you look at the, the last five to ten years, there's been a lot of reform uh, in terms of the uh, ability to be able to lease companies in Nigeria. You know, in fact, the government has what they call free trade zones. Mm -hmm. They also have uh, things like what they call pioneer status for companies with comedy in a particular sector. Um, you know, we've had a, a lot of, we've talked about Ngozi Okonje, 
yes. says if you're not in Nigeria, then you're not in <laughs> Africa. And so it's the Naira, even though the Naira is under pressure, it's lost about 8% because of the decline in the price of oil. But the government is doing everything it can, the central bank, to ensure and what they've done is restrict foreign exchange. I mean, stops people from importing toothpicks. You can import it with your own money. You can go and get the money elsewhere, but not from the banks, not, not from the central bank. That's so excellent. I think the macroeconomics are strong. The fundamentals are strong. Inflation is still quite high at about 8%. Well, GDP growth for this year is about 6%, so people believe that's helpful. If they change the petrol, if they were able to formalize the petroleum industry bill and create the reforms, yes. and also the new government is trying to uh, fix the problem in the national oil company, put somebody there that the, uh, the sector has confidence in, a guy called Ibe Kachiku. So he's already doing some reforms, the refineries, if they come on stream, and we have enough capacity, that will reduce the amount of money that is being spent on importing refined petroleum and also we, we need to focus also on the energy sector because the megawattage at the moment is about 5,000. This government has said they will increase it year on year by 5,000 megawatts. So we're looking to see all those kind of changes happen and mm -hmm. that will lead to more return on investment. That's investment. absolutely amazing. And and then trade, we've, we've talked a little bit about the trade that's that's going on. Um, so we, we know tr Nigeria trades with many countries and across Africa too, and we've talked about Nigerians also investing in other parts of Africa. Um, I'm interested in trade and how do we combine trade and new investments. Um, so we're speaking to entrepreneurs on the line, how do they look at the opportunities that can come out of trade? Look, I think when you talk about trade, I mean Nigeria significantly, Nigeria's competitive advantage is the oil trade. Mm -hmm. that Nigeria is done for the last 50 years. And I think that for anybody who wants to trade with Nigeria going forward, you've got to look at all the sectors, like agriculture, for example, Absolutely. the food industries. Mm -hmm. That population will drive that. So you go into Nigeria, situated factory, we're talking to people, <coughs> excuse me, we're talking to people who are trying to go into the packaging industry. I know companies like Nampak are doing very well. Packaging in Nigeria is not of the highest quality, so that's an area. Even things like footwear, 170 million people have to wear shoes, right? Yes, so, that's and, and the kids have to take uh, lunch bags to school, bags to school. So packaging in plastics, in leather, whatever, that, you know, how that is going to come about will be an opportunity. Also, we're talking earlier when we're driving here yes. about education. Yes. There's about a million people in Nigeria who come out of matric who can't get into the university system. There's opportunity there. There's opportunity for private education from primary to tertiary. There's also opportunity in health, the health sector. Just recently, a, a minister, a former governor in Nigeria, had an accident. He plunked into an American embassy car. They had to fly him out of Nigeria because we don't really have, you know, all the, the equipment. The facilities. Okay. Yes. So we need first-class hospitals. Also, in terms of infrastructure, well, the roads are very capital intensive, but there's a lot of states in Nigeria that would need roads, good roads, so that they can bring out the food from the rural areas into the urban centers. So there's a lot of opportunity in Nigeria in various sectors for trading and also for really building the infrastructure. That, that's excellent. And I know you talked about agriculture before. Obviously, it's a growing part of the GDP. And agriculture for the rest of Africa is also important. You know, we need to, it always amazes me when we have countries that are importing food in Africa. Yes. And yet we're growing food to export for other countries. Yes, I just so, also wanted to mention, in Nigeria, one of the things I always say to people, that if you want to order a croissant yes. or a muffin, please don't. Because what, what has happened is that people are too excited about the local food. And so in terms of confectionery, if you were to become, if you were baking cakes in Nigeria, to the standard of South Africa, you make a million dollars on yeah. a regular basis. Because the, the people want, the kids want the cakes, but the Nigerians don't have the expertise when it comes to flour, adapted foods, they haven't really perfected it. Even things like chefs, for example, yes. it's a new phenomenon in Nigeria, it's growing. You know, people can cook, but in terms of continental cuisines, they haven't really gone to hotel schools and so on. Yeah. So there's another area in terms of food and beverage. Food and beverage. Uh, yes, hotels. Opportunities. Huge in opportunities in hotels. Catering. Catering. Types of catering. Yeah, yes, because we, we have a lot of big weddings, parties, yes. funerals. So catering is also a huge area. Events, organizing conferences properly. Um, you know, 
even servicing the airlines in Nigeria. There's so many airlines in Nigeria. British Airways comes in 17 times a week. Yeah. Virgin also is there. All the big airlines are there. Catering services, massive opportunity as well. Okay, that's great. And of course, all of this can't happen without infrastructure. So we've touched a little bit on infrastructure. There's a lot of development across the continent on infrastructure, and Nigeria is one of those that's getting some of this investment. So is it visible? You were there last week. Can you see the visible differences that the development in infrastructure is actually making, even in just in Lagos? Yes, I was in Lagos and Abuja, and I think that Abuja, I used to live in Abuja. In 2002, I left Abuja. But everywhere in Abuja is up for grabs. I mean, there's cranes everywhere. Yes. Roads have opened up. There's sleep roads. There's hotels popping up. You know, all sorts of infrastructure popping. The city is growing. And I think infrastructure in Nigeria is growing. Well, but the key infrastructure that people talk about is ports, railways, right. and roads, link roads. I mean, even in my village where I come from, there are two flyovers across the highway. So that's also significant because that has reduced traffic save more lives. So definitely infrastructure is growing, but it can't grow fast enough because there's a finite amount of money yes. that Nigerians have. So the Chinese are in there building the railways, and I think the Indians are also helping in some of the sectors around infrastructure, but I think the significant one will be the, the link roads that link states to states and that links town to towns. Okay. That's where there's a lot of opportunity to invest. Absolutely. Yes. And then quickly touching on manufacturing, um, which, and I know there are some manufacturing starting in, in Nigeria. Is there huge opportunities for other people to go in and manufacture? So we talked about food and beverage. There's um, huge opportunity in Nigeria, 170 million people. You can imagine the amount of transactions that come out of that. Absolutely. People want finished goods, people want from pharmaceuticals to food to all sorts of, all, all sorts of areas. In fact, I mean, we're trying to look at how do we stop taking bottles of wine mm -hmm. into Nigeria because that's weight, dead weight, because yes. it's a liquid that we need, right? Yeah. So we need to get a bottling plant in Nigeria, standardized to the South African standard, decent bottles, and put the liquid inside. So there's so much opportunity around manufacturing. Of course, the challenge for that is the energy capacity yes. on the grid. People are using generators. And those who are able to manufacture in Nigeria are laughing all the way to the back from water to liquids, all sorts of liquids and petroleum products. It's really a huge area that people don't really talk about much. Okay, that's great. Oil and gas we've kind of touched on. I'm not going to dwell on that at, at much more now. Um, so there's been overall improvements that's going on. You've talked about it. There's a vibrant economy. There's lots of opportunities. Um, you know, basically the politics are getting better in the country. So for me, there's, there's so much positivity. It's almost difficult to see the negatives um, on this con on this particular country. So FDI is growing. There's job creation. So what's happening with people like the youth? Um, you know, there's been lots of investments. I mean, there's a slide that shows some of the companies that are investing, the countries that are investing. We know investment is going in. As you drive around, do you see youth? looking optimistic, being optimistic, getting jobs, you're talking about new universities and education opportunities. Are the youth being taken as part of this development? I think the, 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 the challenges are there for the youth because also we rely a lot on formal education in Nigeria if you don't have a university degree or you call the dropout. You know, but I think the youth with the with the advent of the internet, with the opportunities around uh, online uh, retail and people doing things for themselves. We, I was speaking to a lady yesterday who's a, uh, who's a flying doctor in Nigeria trying to get her to come and speak to us as the Guild of Nigeria Professionals, the young people who are, bla who are blazing the trail. I have a book in the car about diasporans who are coming back home with skill sets. I mean, there's a yes. lot of young people yes. who are coming into that space, employing people, setting up their own businesses, you know, so I think the youth are really poised for for change to to provide leadership in business, but of course the government itself needs to pull the youth in. So we are saying that look, for even at cabinet level, we want to see a generational change. We don't want to see people in the 60s as ministers. Even the past sitters, there's about 800 SOEs in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We should get more youth youth involved to run it. If they said there's a ministry of youths. 
they should be the person who has that ministry should be a young person. We also want to see more youth being profiled. And if you look at um, the the program Ebony Life, you see that more Abudu has done a lot for young people. Yes. All the presenters, even bringing South African presenters to come and anchor shows on our platform. I think that would help. Also in the music industry, those guys are role models for a lot of young people. I mean, Wizkid, the badge, all those guys are very young. So I think the youth will, will definitely be more visible in the next five years in Nigeria. Yeah. So let, let's jump straight into ways to enter the market. So you're an entrepreneur, you're sitting in South Africa or in another country. How, what would you recommend as great, easy market entries into, okay. into the country? Okay, so the first thing, like anything, you know, you need to learn a little bit more about the country. I think if you go into any country and you don't know where the major airports are, you don't know what the culture is, the currency, how the people react, you know, what they like, what food they eat and so on, it's going to be difficult. So you need to learn about countries like what they say, this is KYC, you know, your customer. Mm -hmm. That's very important. One. And also go in there with an open mind. A lot of people say negative things about Nigeria. Even Nigerians say negative things about Nigeria. But that doesn't help because, I, as I say, Nigeria has no problem with anyone. It's Nigerians that have problems with people, not the country. So the country is open. The airport has never been closed. At least in, since I've been born, I don't remember the airport being closed. So the airport is open. It's a six-hour flight. Then what's critical also is to register your company on arrival first. Before you even bother about getting a local partner, register your company so you know you're there for business. And the company that, uh, that deals with that, the entity, is the Corporate Affairs Commission. The Corporate Affairs Commission for big investors, one-stop shop, is the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, which is called the NIPC. They will hold your hand and let you know in terms of tariffs, customs duties, if you're taking a product in, there's a, there's a body called NAVDAC. I call it the almighty NAVDAC. You've got to register everything through NAVDAC. Then there's the uh, standard organization of Nigeria in terms of standards, what they call the Bureau, South African yes. Bureau of Standards, yes. the CBS. Yes. So you've got to register your product with them, something called SONCAP. Then you have the Patents Office mm -hmm. for patents. If you have a patent, you want to register. So once you've got all that, then you know if you, it's also useful to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce, the South African Nigeria Chamber of Commerce. There's also a Nigeria South African Chamber of Commerce on the other side. So what that does is you then meet people who have already established businesses in Nigeria, successful, like your banks, your MTN, multi-choice is in there, and the individuals like ourselves who are there, so that we can hold your hand. Yes. Help you find a local partner. And then the next thing is to take the trip, go to Nigeria, and uh, get your feet wet, and get to see the people, maybe even watch, you can sit in a restaurant, watch what people are doing, yeah. you know, go around the country, Get a sense whether you really want to put your dollars in there. But I think you would you never regret it. It's a huge opportunity. So we always talk about high risk. I mean, Africans think investing in Africa is high risk. Um, when you talk about investing in Nigeria, they think it's even higher risk, but obviously higher returns. Uh, yeah, I always use that analogy to if you want to marry a beautiful woman, what do you have to do? You pay a premium. So if you're going to a market that gives you uh, 10 times the population of the next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. So you got to pay a premium. Nigerians are not um, waiting for people to come in. They're already in there making yes. a lot of money. And they're going out, as you see with Dangote. But what we can't do as Africans is to sit, even in South Africa, if you sit in your bedroom, nobody's going to come and do business with mm -hmm. you. You've got to be out there. You've got to knock on people's doors. There's a saying in Nigeria that, look, if you want to get anything done, you have to go to it. Nothing is going to come to you. And if if the guys who came into Africa three, four hundred years ago could spot the opportunity and colonize Africa, and then we are sitting in our own continent and saying there's high risk. Where there's low risk, there's low return. There's Where there's no high return. risk, there's Absolutely. high return. But you've got to take calculated risk and also watch people who have taken those steps, like MTN is in Syria, they're in Afghanistan, they're in Iran. Those are very high risk markets. But they're there and they're making money. Absolutely. That's what's critical. Uh, and then there's people like ourselves, win-win solutions, that's what we do, we facilitate doing business in Africa. There's the Chamber of Commerce that Absolutely. we work with. They, we're here to give advice, we're here to help people to understand the continent um, and find new partners where necessary. I'm a great believer in that market entry into Africa should be, sorry, excuse me for flicking the slides, should be made through local partners. 
So I just wanted to do one minute on We Connect International. Those who've listened to my previous webinars know that I'm now also the executive director of We Connect International in South Africa. Focuses on women doing business in South, in South Africa and helping to engage them and get them to get business from the large corporates. A lot of the large corporates are American corporates. They've signed global agreements to give more of their business to Africa. Now, We Connect International has also been launched in Nigeria and is doing very well. A lot of women business, women-owned businesses have registered with We Connect, and I can link you with them. So, if you want a partner in Nigeria, um, those companies have already been certified. They get audited, uh, and we can connect you with with those women businesses. And I think for me, it's one of the best models to do business on the continent. Have a local partner. They understand the market. They can help you maneuver through the registration and other things. Uh, and of course, having a partner on site it can help you. So I'm going to stop there, and I think we should just give a few minutes to go to questions. We're kind of running out of time. Um, are there any questions at the moment that we can go back to um, answering questions on Nigeria? Let me take a look for you, Jean. Um, the, what about the, there is a question from ANSA. Um, let me just read this quickly and make sure I have it correct. What about the maritime sector? What is your view on this sector? The maritime sector, thank you for asking that question. The critical opportunity in the maritime sector, I think Nigeria has about six or seven ports. We have the, uh, the one in Lagos, we have two in Lagos, we have another one in Calabar, you have the Orne and so on. The challenge is that, and that's why they need to reform the customs service, the challenge is the gridlock that happens. You know, everything pops in at the same time, the speed of bringing out the goods from the from the port sometimes it takes as much as a month. But again, what happens is it's all about understanding the documentation that is required. Because if you send a container into Nigeria and you don't know all the documentation, or you have an agent that goes to sleep, then things are very difficult. But again, those ports, the way they were designed is that there hasn't been a lot of investment in those ports in the last 30 years or so. What, what the government has done is to prioritize uh, the oil sector and give you know less emphasis to the ports itself. So that's infrastructure. But there's opportunity again there to go and help to really develop it into what we have in Durban and elsewhere on the continent, ports that are really handling a lot of traffic. Fantastic. Thank, thank you very any much. Any other questions? There doesn't seem to be at this stage any other questions, Jean. Um, nothing else has come through at this stage. Okay, that, that, that's fantastic. So um, my apologies again that we had technical errors at the beginning to start. I just wanted to end. Of course, we've got the uh, business scenario planning workshop that's being run on the 25th of September and the 9th of October, both in Santon, um, and we'll be digging further into West Africa, you know, what makes up, what, it, what is it that shapes West Africa, what are, where are the business opportunities, the politics, the economics, etc. And we've got an amazing facilitator that we use for our scenario planning, um, Kofi Kwako. Uh, he's also a lecturer at uh, Wits University, the business school there. So if people want to join that, please let us know. Um, it's a really amazing investment for a day, especially if you're looking at business opportunities in that part of Africa. And um, fantastic. We do have one more question, um, Jean. Okay. And on that note, before we move on to that question, if you could just, people that are interested in um, contacting Jean or attending the workshop that she's talking about, um, or if you have any other questions that may pop up later, just put in your name and mobile address. Uh, number in the chat box. I'm sure Jean will get in contact with you and help facilitate that. Jean, we've got a question here from Kerry uh, who says, are Nigerians shopping online? Would an online clothing retail opportunity be something to look at? Oh yeah, I mean there's a lot of uh, websites, jumia.com, Conga, there's a lot, there's a host of them. Nigerians are shopping online and uh, in fact not just shopping for clothes, shopping for food and shopping for all sorts of things because Nigerians are constantly, I call them perennial buyers. They're always buying something. If you go around any airport in the world, you see a Nigerian <laughs> who is begging 
to have his excess luggage carried for him. <laughs> Even a passenger, they don't know. They're obsessed with shopping. So there are opportunities, huge ones, for online shopping in Nigeria. Yeah, and driven by the internet. Uh, and I know Carrie and her portfolio. It's actually very exciting. Oh, wonderful uh, opportunity that she's got together. Okay. That looks at shopping for women in a different way. And Nigeria is the place to be. Yeah, I think definitely Obsessed Nigeria is a, a market that you need to look at, Carrie, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe even partner with some of the local um, fashion designers locally there as well. So Absolutely. it's a really great opportunity to do that. So how is the postal service? How will things get? The postal to service in Nigeria is three letters: D H L. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we know those letters very well. That's great, and we trust them too. <laughs> so, so there you are, Kerry. There's the answer for you. Uh, any other questions? That's it for now. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything else on the line. Jean, Kerry did. Uh, exclaim yes uh, can find a partner so she seems to be excited by this overall um, Jean thank you very much for for joining us and thank you to your guest as well I found the, the talk extremely informative I'm sure everyone else on the line did as well uh, for those of you on the line we will have a recording of this and as I said in the chat box we I'll keep the the window open a little bit so if you would like to work with Jean going forward just put your your name and your mobile number in there and we'll be sure to pass your details on to to Jean. Um, thank you very much, Jean. It it, it was thank as you. always thank you. extremely always insightful. To your team, and of course, thank you to my guests. Um, you know, thank you for making the time. Thank really you. appreciate it. It's always very informative to have somebody from the country give us an inside of you. So, um, really appreciate all your knowledge. Thank, thank you. you. Fantastic. Thank you. thank you very much, everybody. Great. Thanks. Thank Have a great you. day, everybody. Thank Fantastic. you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a great week. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, next you. week, for those of you that are still in the room, uh, we will be having Leon Latakhan joining us. Um, I'll be hosting him next week, Wednesday. That's the 16th of September, also between 7 and 8. Um, the webinar will be Introduction to Converting Prospects into Real Customers. So that's one you don't want to miss. Leon has been involved in the internet space since 1999 uh, and uh, I've known he's worked with the independent online newspapers IOL and you know been the managing director of major websites across our country including the Star, Cape Times and the Argus. So you don't want to miss that. That's next week Wednesday. Uh, introduction to Converting Your Prospects into Real Customers with Leon Lodafone. Thank you very much, everybody, and have a wonderful morning. Keep well. Bye-bye.